welcome back to an episode of Molecular Playground. In this one, I make aloe bromide. This compound is mainly used to add aloe groups to larger molecules. Be warned though, this is a dangerous alkylating agent because the bromide ion can very easily be removed. But before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe, give a super thanks, and join the Molecular Playground community today. 100% of your contributions will directly fund future experiments. The materials you need are Aloe alcohol Sodium bromide Sulfuric acid and Magnesium sulfate To make my dilute 80% sulfuric acid, I'm first going to pour out 130 milliliters of freezing water. I'm going to add 390 milliliters of freezing sulfuric acid. One cool thing I noted was because the temperature was so low, the sulfuric acid and water formed these semi-emissible layers. In a freezing 1 liter boiling flask, I add the first half of my aloe alcohol solution, which is about 300 milliliters of 70 something percent aloe alcohol. This contains around 200 grams of aloe alcohol, or 3.45 moles. While stirring, I add 180 grams of freezing sodium bromide. This is approximately 1.75 moles of sodium bromide. In my freezing addition funnel, I add 125 milliliters of 80% sulfuric acid. This is approximately 1.76 moles of sulfuric acid. It is important that the drip rate is fast enough to where you fully utilize the chill while also slow enough to be thoroughly stirred in. Too fast results in overoxidation and too slow will waste chill. When all the sulfuric acid is added, a fluffy sodium bisulfite layer is formed in the liquid. I distill this under a water trap so Lakatz Mori vapors don't escape. One thing I noticed was how cloudy the distillation was. I may be getting aloe bromide first already. The reaction flask is completely black. When the distillation finishes, a ring of tar and a molten salt puddle are left. My distillate has taken on a light yellow color probably due to some decomposed impurities. I refreeze and add another 180 grams of sodium bromide. This will react to the other half of the free aloe alcohol in there. I slowly drip in the sulfuric acid next. It's especially important this addition be more gentle with the aloe bromide present. Near the end, I notice two layers forming. This is a great sign I have a lot of aloe bromide until a thick sodium bisulfate cakes over it. I distill it all with the foil unwrapped so you can see the inside. In the reaction flask, you may see bubbles coming from this second invisible line. I bet this is where my aloe bromide is. In my collection flask, I get a milky white distillate. There should only be water and aloe bromide left. Now you might be wondering how the hydrogen bromide produced replaces the hydroxyl group instead of adding to the alkene part. What it comes down to is stability of the intermediate. If hydrogen bromide were to protonate the alkene, a secondary carbocation made is kind of stable, but the hydroxyl group doesn't help its case. The reaction instead proceeds through a primary allylic carbocation. The reason why this is more stable than a regular primary carbocation is because the structure is capable of resonance. The two extra electrons in the alkene can hop over to the cation side and hop back over to the other cation side. Resonance in action. Then the bromide ion promptly attacks the cation, forming what we now know as allobromide. In the end, I am left with thick tar and a nice lemon colored distillate with a thin layer of water on top. I pour out the rest of my aloe alcohol for the next half. I don't bother to clean the flask because it will get dirty again. I added another 180 grams of sodium bromide and start the sulfuric acid drip. This time, the mixture semi-seizes. I still hear the stir bar moving, but everything else is stuck. I shake and stir it manually before distilling. I collect the rather dirty distillate with a strangely clear top layer. The reaction flask is just building up more tar. I add the last 180 grams of sodium bromide to the final quarter of aloe alcohol left. As you can see, there's already two layers forming. I slowly drip in my last quarter of sulfuric acid while stirring high. This eventually turns the solution an amber color. The distillation yields a strange tricolored distillate. I have no idea what's going on at this point, but it's a very cool visual nonetheless. I pour out over 500 milliliters of crude aloe bromide into an addition funnel. When water and organics finally separate, I drain off the bottom layer. I feel the top layer may have its own portion, so I keep it. The density of the heavier crude is 1.341. That means I have a significant amount of aloe bromide with some water lightening the density. I add some magnesium sulfate and stir vigorously to combat this. The lighter crude is 1.287, which is surprisingly close to the heavier crude. 
I also added in some magnesium sulfate to sop up some of the water. I do a somewhat soft distillation just to boil off the allobromide without taking any water along. The cloudy distillate indicates a very pure product that has some minor impurities. My reaction flask looks very runny and not at all tarry, meaning a great deal of allobromide is in there. I know this high boiling stuff isn't my product because it barely bubbles. I freeze my distillate before adding some magnesium sulfate. There seems to be more water than I thought by how much clumping there is, so I distill it all again. In a smaller flask, I've frozen it all to negative 10 C. The ring of ice is the little bit of water that I got over. I simply decant my allobromide into another flask before I pour it into my storage container. I got 460 grams of allobromide. The ideal weight is 835 grams, so I got a 55% yield. A little lower than I wanted, and I admit I could have refined some parts, but this is still good enough for whatever I want to use it for. For my density test, I weigh out 67.5 grams of allobromide. The volume is a bit over 48 milliliters, making the density 1.4 grams per milliliter. That is perfectly in line with allobromide's reported density at 1.398 grams per milliliter, definitively proving I have made pure allobromide.